One final question. Better be good. Yeah, the, I mean, the Catholic Church is committed to um, this. To, to be a Catholic is, um, to, to, li to live surrounded by miracles, essentially. Uh, not simply the miracles of the saints. But every, every Sunday Mass is a miracle. At, at every Mass on Sunday, the, the bread and wine are transformed, transubstantiated into the body and blood of Christ. Uh, so God comes that near to you. Uh, and and the part, of, part, of the Catholic, part of Catholic pious practice is to sort of keep alive the awareness of that marvel. Uh, that that the, the church that Christ founded 2,000 years ago is the same church today. Uh, and the practices that are being practiced are the, are the, the same developed practices of, of the time. Uh, so we are doing what we were commanded by Christ to do. Uh, and uh, and in, in, in a way, the intellectual, <coughs> I think something which is sometimes misunderstood about ca the Catholic intellectual life is that it's not so much ach achieving the answer um, as that it is creating the space where the mystery is. So the, the Catholic, the, so Catholic intellectual life, often, you know, there's anathema sit, uh, let it be anathema, uh, is in, in Catholic councils, dogmatic decrees, says here's a position, let it be anathema. You know, no Catholic can think that. Uh, but what it's doing is it's carving out this space it, 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 where, you know, yes, that position is incompatible with what we understand to be, with Catholics believe to be Christ's will and, and the meaning of our faith. Uh, so is that one, and so is this one. But in the middle, there's this huge space to, to where people can, can have many speculations and arguments about what it all means. Uh, so there's, so essentially the intellectual life isn't, the Catholic intellectual life isn't sort of coming down on like a laser beam on one thing. It's really sort of built, is sort of building the space where the mystery of God remains, because God is free and God acts, and He acts every you know in a Catholic in, in in the Catholic faith, He acts every day, thousands and thousands of times across the world, uh, in a miraculous way, transforming the body and the bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ, uh, sending down His Holy Spirit in baptism. Uh, the so in this in a, in a certain sense the uh, the Church exists to bear witness to that to be the vessel by the, the, sort of the hands and feet of God in the world through time, uh, to proclaim it to the world, uh, and, but also to hold, it, to, to maintain its integrity. Um, you know, I, I often, if you read Catholic saints' lives, uh, a lot of Catholic saints um, are persecuted by the church. You know, it's sort of a typical phase in a Catholic saint's life is that you come under suspicion by the church, uh, the authorities come and look into what you're doing, you might be exiled or something like that for a while, and then you come back. This, this happened, this is a very typical part of, of what happens in Catholic saints. Um, and so, it, it, and reflecting on the fact, the fact, it occurred to me that the reason for that is that, um, you know, there are lots of spirits in the world. There's the Holy Spirit, but then there's also the other spirits, uh, and and the spirit is you know the Holy Spirit is erupting, but other spirits are erupting too, and part of the church's job is to distinguish what's the what's the Holy Spirit from other spirits, and so you know you might have this enthusiastic guy that looks like he's doing great work, and you're like well but that that's a little bit different from what we're used to, and and basically the church the church's activity is is almost sort of to squash it. Because uh, if it's from God, it'll win out anyway, uh, and so th and so the you know so it's you can you can sort of think of the church's activity as quality control, uh, that the you know making sure that only the Holy Spirit gets through and not and not the spirits that dwell below. 
So, so I think that that's, that's a looping answer, which may not have answered your question, but uh, I hope it's at least some, somewhat helpful. Okay, so just uh, before you leave, uh, if I can call your attention to the fact that uh, shortly we'll be having uh, two more lectures this semester. One will be by Rabbi Mark Gottlieb, who is the head of the Yeshiva University High School for Boys in New York. And he'll be speaking on the Jewish view of, of life and learning, Torah Umada. And then secondly will be Father John Bears, the Dean of St. Vladimir's Orthodox Theological Seminary in Yonkers, New York. Uh, he'll be speaking on uh, an Orthodox uh, or a Greek Orthodox view of life and learning, faith, reason, and culture as idea. Uh, and those are, th those are the, the two remaining lectures on our theme in liberal learning uh, over the course of the rest of this semester, but then we'll begin thinking about this again next semester as well. Um, and finally, next week, uh, we're going to be having an honors forum back in where we normally meet in the Eagle, uh, in Eagle Hall, or uh, in the Eagle Hall Great Room. Uh, and our speaker will be Jake Armerding, who is a folk musician and be a Christian uh, folk musician who will be reflecting on his music. But there will be a concert um, on the Saturday at 8 o'clock uh, in Hainer Lawn, and uh, there will be also Windows on the World opportunity to spend time reflecting with him about his music. So bear that in mind. If you're interested in that, there are flyers here that you can come forward and get afterwards. Have a great weekend. <laughs>